to 2306. Have a good evening. You saw there the ABC News special report as we heard live from former Vice President Joe Biden not declaring victory, but certainly still confident that that victory is on its way. Yeah, meantime, here is a look at the results across the country tonight. Let's start in Arizona. Joe Biden is in the lead, but President Trump isn't too far behind, a difference of 38,000 plus votes. Arizona's Secretary of State Katie Hobbs gave an update a couple of hours ago saying there are still 173,000 ballots that need to be counted, with half, more than half of those coming from the Phoenix area, Maricopa County. We expect the next update from Arizona tomorrow. Meantime in Georgia tonight, it is the tightest race of all the battleground states we are watching at this hour. Most of the votes are tallied, but there are still thousands of provisional ballots left to review. Georgia election officials saying counting will go into the weekend. And in Nevada, Joe Biden still has a big lead there, but we don't expect to have official numbers for quite some time. Nevada is one of a handful of states that mailed ballots to all registered voters. And as long as they were postmarked by Election Day, they can still be received and counted until November 10th, which is next Tuesday. Let's check in on the latest numbers in the race for president. Former Vice President Joe Biden has 253 electoral votes at this hour. President Donald Trump has 214 electoral votes. Previously, we were reporting the numbers from the Associated Press, but because Arizona is still fairly close and they're still counting ballots, we've decided to remove its 11 electoral votes from our count. You can see Arizona highlighted in yellow on the map since it is still too close to call. And taking a look at each candidate's pathway to victory, Joe Biden must claim two of the four battleground states on your screen or the state of Pennsylvania in order to win the election. President Trump needs three of those battleground states and Pennsylvania to claim a victory. And President Donald Trump's allegations about voter fraud has some concern about the election process. But in reality, voter fraud is rare. And the president hasn't backed the allegations with any proof. The night team Stephen Cavazos with the evidence that voters should trust the process. I think he's just trying to hold on to power. Jim Linehan calls it nonsense. President Donald Trump has cast doubts over the validity of votes. Linehan voted in person. He says he's not worried that his vote wasn't counted and doesn't believe election offices are involved in funny business. They don't have any skin in this game except for to do what's right for the country. Votes by mail have been a major topic during this election, with some questioning if the process is secure and valid. The Bear County's Elections Department Administrator says it keeps track of all votes and ensures that voter records are as accurate as can be. We get notified of deaths. We get notified if someone's moved out of the county. Kalanen says she is aware that other organizations have ballot trackers, but adds they aren't always accurate. But please tell them come to us. Again, I think that should reassure a lot of people. You can check for your vote on the Bear County Elections website. On the homepage, you'll want to click on the link that says unofficial daily register and early vote roster. Select the day you voted, whether in mail or in person. A list of voters will then be available for you to search your name. I feel like that's a great um, system to feel good about your vote and, and the process itself. Nashby says misinformation can be harmful, but he trusts the process. If you're level headed enough, you see through it and you I trust the process. Now, the elections website also has a separate page for voters who wish to track their mail in ballots. Now, Steve E.C. says it's a very easy process. All a voter really needs is just their last name as well as their birth date. Now, Kalanen says that counting is expected to continue. She says they still need to process about 8,500 military ballots and about 1,800 provisional ballots. We should have an update on Monday, but Kalanen hopes to be completed by next week. Steve Isis. Thank you, Stephen. While the votes are still being counted, there are several questions that have come up, like if President Trump fails to win re-election, could he run again in 2024? The two-term allowance for a president does not have to be consecutive, so it's possible, but is it likely? If he did run again, that would mean he would be 78 years old in four years. Right now, Vice President Joe Biden is 77 years old. That would make Biden 81 four years from now. 
Just for comparison, President Ronald Reagan was 77 years old when he completed his second term as president. Meantime, police in New Braunfels are keeping a close eye on a President Donald Trump rally scheduled for tomorrow. It's expected to draw hundreds of people to Main Plaza. Police departments across the nation have been monitoring rallies for both presidential candidates in the event they turn violent. The night team's Tiffany Huerta spoke to business owners who say they welcome people to express themselves, but in a safe way. It's business as normal in downtown New Braunfels. This is a very, you know, family centric community. Cities across the nation have been anticipating rallies in response to the results of the presidential election. Earlier this week, businesses in downtown San Antonio boarded over fears of unrest. Meanwhile, business owners in New Braunfels say they welcome the rallies and are not concerned with tomorrow's event in support of President Donald Trump. I think being in New Braunfels, we show respect for each other. I've seen a lot of people go by and they, they're just very uh, happy people and honking their horns. The city of New Braunfels Police Department says they are aware of a planned event at the main plaza and will be present to ensure safety. Hydrick says there's been many events over the last couple of weeks leading up to election day. Most people that even when they come here to protest, they do it with just a gentle nature about themselves. Uh, we've never seen any violence. The manager of Water to Wine says everyone should be allowed to express themselves, but in a safe manner. I think that uh, there's been things on both sides that people have, you know, been disrespectful or things like that. So I do feel like as long as it's a respectful thing, then people should, you know, feel free to kind of feel how they want to feel. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Now, we reached out to the organizers of the event but have not heard back. New Braunfels Police Department says they will continue to provide a presence at these events to ensure safety. The new on the night beat a chase across county lines ends in a crash and several people sent to the hospital. Deputies with the Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office say they got a call for a stolen vehicle taken from a gas station. The Ford F-250 tracked down, but the driver refused to stop until officials say that truck crashed into three other vehicles near I-10 East and Loop 1604 in Northeast Bear County. That driver was arrested. Three people hurt in the crash were taken to the hospital. It's still ahead on the night beat. Our election coverage continues. The ballot numbers, what election officials are experiencing, and what we can expect as the race moves forward. Plus an update on Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf after a possible exposure to COVID-19 and the latest number of cases our area is seeing. But first, one man looking ahead to another election, a local activist, Farrell Clark, talking about his run for the District 2 City Council seat. Next. The San Antonio police say a man is dead after crashing a stolen car. It happened near West Commerce and Western Park on the west side just before 9 p.m. Police say a red Camaro was stolen from a convenience store after the car was left unlocked. The man who stole the car died at the scene after a head on collision with another vehicle. The other driver suffered a broken leg and was taken to the hospital. This presidential election hasn't even been called yet, but one activist has his sights on an upcoming election for San Antonio. Activist Farrell Clark is officially running for City Council District 2 next year. Jada Andrew Sullivan currently holds that seat. Clark played a role in the City Council declaring racism a public health crisis over the summer. He says some topics he will focus on include education, relocating city funds to District 2 communities, and supporting small businesses. Clark says he found the need to run while being an activist in the area. Really, you know, engaging with the citizens on a more one-on-one -on -one basis. I saw that there's a lot of need in District 2, and I believe that, you know, coming together with a different mindset, a whole, you know, and a different platform might be a time to bring change to District 2. San Antonio's general election is scheduled for May 1st, 2021. An update on Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf, who is self quarantining after a possible exposure to a case of COVID-19. His son, Commissioner Kevin Wolf, says the judge is doing fine and is not showing any symptoms, but is still awaiting test results. In regards to the pandemic here in Bear County, our seven day average now increasing to 218 tonight. Five new deaths were reported. 
all happening within the last two weeks. Over in our hospitals, we have 253 COVID-19 patients hospitalized. That includes 46 patients from El Paso, which of course is dealing with overwhelmed hospitals there. Of the total hospitalizations here, 111 remain in the ICU and 52 are on ventilators. There are free COVID-19 tests being set aside for election judges here in Bear County. Bear County Elections Administrator Jackie Callanan says the goal is to give those judges some peace of mind after interacting with large amount of voters who visited the polls. The testing will happen on Monday and Tuesday. So far, 800 judges are signed up. Judges who would still like to sign up should contact the Bear County Elections Office for an appointment. Take you outside really quickly as we take a live look outside with live cam 66 degrees out there as we head into the weekend. The weekend is here. It's upon us and it's going to be a little more of the same, especially in terms of the foggy mornings and temperatures will be running above average. So more foggy mornings and temperatures you know, average is about 77 degrees for the high and I think we'll be in the low 80s to near 80 degrees and a weak cold front to talk about next week. And we have this trend here of foggy mornings and there's a reason for that. So let's get right to the explanation. Why are we having these fog mornings? Well, first of all, clear sky, calm wind, and the temperature drops down to the dew point. Now remember the dew point, the definition of it is the temperature the air must cool to in order to become saturated. You got to become saturated in order to get fog. So as that temperature drops, hits that dew point, become saturated. You have light winds as well because otherwise there's too much mixing and that saturation gets mixed out with the light winds or calm winds. The fog settles in, so that's what we've been dealing with. And one thing that leads to this as well this time of year is just the sheer fact that we have longer nights now. They're just a little bit longer and that gives the saturation and the fog a little more time to de develop and gives it basically more of an opportunity compared to the summertime when nights are a lot shorter and that sun comes up a lot quicker. So take a look at our live cam. Clearly no fog out there right now. Temperature is 66 clear sky though. Not much of a wind dew point of 55, so we have to get that air temperature right down near that dew point, and I think it's going to happen. Air temperatures for the most part in the 50s to lower to mid 60s across all of South Texas. Del Rio an exception at 71, but we're seeing these temperatures fall off pretty quickly and we have a lot more time as the night goes on. So the dew points right now dew point temperatures low to mid 50s. I think we'll make it there and in turn we will reach that saturation point and of course then fog developing and our future cast shows that again. What's this the probably third or fourth night in a row? I've showed you this and it says the same thing. More fog likely to develop. I think the difference tomorrow though is it'll be a shallow layer of fog. So really just the early risers and folks that are up at and maybe an hour or two after sun sunrise will actually see it. Then notice even here futurecast 10 AM poof clear sky and we're clearing out. So very early risers, early travel plans. You want that early morning bike ride, jog, dog walk, just anticipate the fog and reduce visibility. Clear sky across the Lone Star State. We need rain. There is a shift in our weather pattern and it's mainly going to be affecting the western third of the US. Big dip, big trough in the upper levels. That's stirring things up. That's why you see radar activity out there over the Rockies and even Pacific Northwest. Now this is going to drop southward. It's a pretty potent upper level low pressure system. It's going to have some unseasonably cool air with it, but it's not going to be here. It's going to be basically along the front range of the Rockies and westward. We're going to be close to it, but not close enough to really be impacted by it. It's going to swing a very weak cold front through town. And it's I don't think it'll have much of an impact in terms of rain chances. Some morning drizzle with thicker fog and dampness Sunday and Monday mornings and then Tuesday with that front a 10% chance. OK, so rain chances. Unfortunately, I know we could use them, but rain chances really aren't looking good. And this La Nina pattern usually leads to warmer than average and drier than average conditions. And it looks like we're falling into that pattern for now. 55 in the morning, 82 and sunny by the afternoon. Sunday, the fog, I think a little thicker and it's going to take a while to shake it with some drizzle. Same story Monday highs right around 80 and you see that front on Tuesday just dropping temperatures a little bit, especially by Wednesday morning.
Thank you, Adam. All right. I heard some yelling back in the sports department tonight. Does that mean there were some big plays <laughs> in our big game coverage? plays. In fact, one of the best plays I've seen all season long is in the big game in our big game coverage tonight. And we're going to show it to you as Alamo Heights is taking on the champion Chargers, trying to take that lead in their district. And if you will not believe this play tonight in that game, we'll show it to you. And can the Jaguars stay undefeated against Roosevelt? The Rough Riders preventing them right now from possibly winning. Let's see if they hold on for the victory for Johnson coming up. Hi, we're the Bernie Champion Cheerleaders, and you're watching big game coverage on KSAT 12. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. The big game and our big game coverage in Bernie tonight, where the Alamo Heights Mules looking to take over the district lead from the champion Chargers. The Mules defense starts off with a bang. Gage Maples jumps the route, comes up with the interception, and he is turning that into a pick six. The 48-yard return gives Heights an early lead in this game, 7 to nothing. But the Chargers kick right back here. Running back Alex Rodriguez fighting his way up the middle of the Mules defense, stretches the ball over the goal line to tie the game at 7 all. The Mules would kick a field goal, take the lead back, but the Chargers respond again. Quarterback Carson Kaiser is about to run, but spots Ryan Brandon open in the flat and pair connect with an 18-yard touchdown and a 14 to 10 lead. But then came the play of the game. Third quarter from Alamo Heights. Quarterback James Selby backed up against his own end zone with a snap of the ball at the half yard line. He finds John York one on one, the defender, and he's got it and he's gone. 99 and a half yards of the house to take the lead 16 to 14 after the extra point was blocked. But now we're in the fourth quarter. The Mules take the lead back with a defense again. This time it's Connor McGrath stepping in front of the intended receiver and he's bringing it all the way back. This time for a 62 yard pick six to get the Mules a lead 23 to 20 in the fourth. Let's see if that's gone finally has not and that is where the score is right now a Johnson major egg getting ready for halftime is number two ranked Jaguars looking to stay undefeated on their season against the Roosevelt Rough Riders Riders who are in third in district Jags go up 21 to nothing to start the game when we arrive and adding to that that's Jags quarterback Ty Reeser with the pump fake and then he takes off picking up 26 yards before he's pushed out of bounds with the Roosevelt 11 yard line Johnson would keep it on the ground with an option read by Reeser and he goes up the middle to extend the Jaguars lead 28 to nothing but look out the Rough Riders respond by scoring 21 unanswered points, including this one to pull within seven. He's a five-yard quarterback keeper by Dwayne Coleman. But Johnson has another touchdown left in them before the half. This time it's running back Matthew Rodriguez. Gets a four-yard TD the hard way, and Johnson leads Roosevelt 35-21. Let's see if that has gone final. Still in the four. Johnson leading 49-28. Let's head to Hero Stadium, where the Churchill Chargers went looking for an upset of the Reagan Rattlers, who are number five in 12's top 12. Undefeated in district play, second only to Johnson. We're in the first quarter. No score. Chargers quarterback Christian Smith with a bootleg. He finds Caleb Harrison, who looks like he's going to be stopped around the 35, but somehow he breaks free, then high steps out of one tackle, then gets tripped up just short of the goal line to save the touchdown, but picks up 73 big yards. Next play, the Chargers go right up the middle. Michael Dottie for the two-yard TD, and a 7 to nothing. Churchill, the final from Heroes. It is 35-7 Reagan. Off we go to Linhoff Stadium tonight, where the Clemens cheerleaders had every reason to be in a great mood. The Buffaloes are already up 21 to nothing over South Sand in the second quarter, going to add to that. Buffs quarterback Max DiDomenico goes to Jameer Dudley in the end zone who makes a great contested catch over the defender for the 20-yard touchdown to go up 28-0. Clemens is not done. Running back Torian Smith rumbles in from four yards out. It's now a 35-point lead. Let's head to the big game coverage scoreboard now for the first time tonight for the finals. Here, 35-0. Clemens over South Sand, Alamo Heights, and Bernie Champion still going at it. That is in the fourth quarter, still up in Bernie. Elsewhere tonight, Johnson over Roosevelt, 49-28. That is in the fourth. Reagan over Churchill. That is the final 35-7. Half Raiders looking for an upset tonight at Ferris Stadium as they went up against the six-ranked Warren Warriors, who are ranked number one in District 29-6A with a 4-1 record. Tap quarterback Justice Hurt connects with a wide-open wide receiver Isaac Jackson for a 24-yard gain down on the Warren 20, using the pass to open up the run as Diego Martinez goes straight up the middle. He's able to get all the way down to the two. And then a couple of plays later, Sean Brown caps off the drive with a touchdown to lift Taft to the early 7-0 lead. The final from Ferris, Taft with a big upset tonight, 35-14. Stephen cheerleaders dancing for joy tonight at Gustafson Stadium as Falcons hosted the Harlan Hawks, who's the big bird tonight. Stevens leading 13 to 6 in the second quarter. Harlan trying to catch up. Quarterback Cannon Williams throwing a perfect strike. Then Andreas Spriggs for the 38-yard score. Now the Hawks are within 1.13 to 12. The final from Gustafson Stadium is Stevens 
falls to Harlan. Harlan gets a big win tonight, 37-34. Say hello to the cheerleaders at Panther Stadium. Lockhart taking on Medina Valley. Home team of 7-0. The defense holding on. Senior Tyler Magnu reads the deep ball perfectly, wins the battle in midair for the interception at midfield. Panthers fired up. The defense holds the lead. They win 7 to nothing. Strike up the band. The number one ranked Poe Pirates in 12's top 12 sub 5A poll are taking on the undefeated record on the road tonight to Natalia where they're facing the Mustangs. Down 12 to 7 second quarter. Poe running back Jaden Fangman takes a handoff, finds a hold, goes through the line, untouched for the 45-yard touchdown. Tack on a two-point conversion and field goal later. And at the half, it was 18 to 12. Poe, let's head back to the big game coverage scoreboard to see if the Mustangs were able to pull off that upset tonight. They did not, though, but it's still in the fourth quarter. Hasn't happened yet. 33-26. Poth is leading in that game. Medina Valley, you saw that one. 7 0. That was that way in the first half as well. 35 to 14, Taft over Warren. 37 34, Harlan defeats Stevens. The Mighty Mustangs of Jefferson High School facing the Edison Golden Bears in the Tommy Bowl at Alamo Stadium tonight, where in the first quarter there's no score. Edison quarterback Brandon Gonzalez throws a tight spiral all the way to the end zone for a 34 yard touchdown toss to Danny Pena, who makes a nice catch over the defender. That makes it 7 0 over Jefferson. The final from the rock pile, Edison gets a win 23 to 6. The Randolph Rohawks on the road tonight in Poti to take on the 10th ranked Aggies in 12's top 12, 7 and 2 on the season. We're in the first quarter. There's no score until this. That's when running back Wesley Rawls takes a handoff. He's off untouched to the end zone. They get close around the 20 yard line, and he's taken it to the house for the 62 yard touchdown to put Poti on the board. First 7 to nothing. And the final from Poti, they needed all of that, right? 14 to 7. Poti gets a win. Concordia Lutheran making the trip to Antonio from Tomball tonight to face the Apaches. Antonio wasting no time getting on the board. Quarterback Zach Schwey with the play action pass to Maddox McDonald, who's able to get by two defenders on his way to a 20 yard touchdown. Patches go up 7 0. Back to the big game coverage scoreboard we go for that final and more. Antonian with the big win tonight, 34 to 10. Poti needed that touchdown you just saw to get by Randolph tonight, 14 to 7. Edison over Jefferson, 23 to 6. And this game had to be canceled tonight between Navarro and Young Men's Leadership Academy. We have much more to come, including our big game coverage road trip fan cam. More scores and more highlights than anywhere else in town. But first, Let's listen to Lavernia Bears marching band. Big game coverage road trip has photographer Eddie Latigo flying down Highway 97 with stops in Floresville, Pleasanton, and Charlotte with all the highlights. Take you live to our newsroom, and that's where we find our Larry Ramirez. Hi, Larry. Hello, Greg, and thank you very much. So, Kerrville Tybee visited Floresville tonight, which saw Tybee's number one ranked defense go up against the Tigers' number one ranked offense in District 15 5A2. Let's go. Who got my back? I got your back. Who got my back? I got your back. Floresville, where the Tigers are hosting the Kerrville Tybee Antlers, third quarter. Tybee's Cooper Dunenberg powers in for a short touchdown, and this game is tied at 28 all. Later in the frame, Tigers strike back. QB Clay Pellich throws to Nate Luther on the slant, and Nate does the rest, tells number 27, get off me, dude, and he's going 65 yards for the Tigers touchdown, and Floresville leads 35 to 28. The Pleasanton Eagle having a good time tonight. Pleasanton home and facing Lavernia. Second quarter, Bears ball, QB Cage Lowry play action, and then throws deep to Daryl Dulac, and good for a big gain inside the 25-yard line. That's a tough combo to defend right there. Two plays later, Sebastian Sanchez takes the handoff, and he finds pay dirt, and the Bears go up 14 to nothing. And finally, Charlotte Trojans hosting Bruni. First quarter, check this out. Charlotte quarterback Mario Campos turns and pitches the ball to Maximus Roland. And this is a touchdown run to the max down the sideline. It goes 70 yards to the house. Wow. Two-point conversion was good, and the Trojans led 8 to nothing. Let's go to that scoreboard now for those finals. And Kerrville Tyvee wins it 42 to 35. Lavernia in a shutout 42 to nothing. And Bruni wins 34 to 8. So last week, Tyvee head coach David Jones said his antlers needed to win this week and they got it. Greg, back to you. Love the name Maximus. That's great. Time now for fan cam. Where you are fans help us cover one of the big games and a big game coverage tonight. Here's our Andrew Seeley. Cross looking for their fourth win of the season against Temple Central Texas. Knights without starting QB Jordan Battles tonight, but Mark Garcia is moving the ball well. First quarter down 7 nothing. fourth and seven. Garcia pulls the ball down and takes off for the sideline. He picks up a huge first down to keep the drive alive. A few plays later, Jonathan Hernandez takes the handoff, racing to the outside, fends off a tackle, and pounds it down to the one-yard line. Nice play, and Romelo Portillo does the rest from a yard out. Holy Cross ties it up at seven, but the Lions respond right back with this four-yard walk 
walk-in score from running back Ryan Turley. And fan cam departs late in the second quarter with Holy Cross trailing 19 to 7. From Wheatley Heights Sports Complex, Andrew Seeley, KSAT 12 Sports. All right, thanks a lot, Andrew. Let's take a look at your final first here on the big game coverage scoreboard 40 to 14. Temple Central Texas over Holy Cross. That has gone final. Buta Johnson and Veterans Memorial. That game had to be canceled. In fact, Veterans Memorial had to cancel their next game too next Thursday as well due to COVID-19 concerns. Medina Valley over Lockhart, 7 to nothing. You saw the only game-saving interception in that game. Now leading Somerset in the Honey Bowl in the fourth quarter. You Valley on top of Somerset, 32-27. That has not gone final. Canyon Lake gets a big win on the road tonight in Burnett, 28 to 16. Lem passes over Fredericksburg, 56 to 20. A lot of points scored in that game. Wimberley over Austin Achieve, 80 to nothing. That's, I believe, the most points they put on the scoreboard this year. Quero over Gonzalez, 56 to 7. That has gone final, as well as Center Point and Harper, 21 to 18. Pearsaw outlasting Bandera in a Big game there, very close one, 24-22. Carrizo Springs falling to Hondo. The Owls put a hurt on him, 65-7. to Divine shuts out Crystal City tonight, 42 to nothing. Comfort over Luling tonight, 76 to nothing. Lago Vista downs Blanco this evening, 42-28. to It is Central Catholic on the road in Katy. They get the big win, 40-20. They got a home game coming up this week. And Houston St. Pius over San Antonio Christian, 48-6. to Couple more to show you. This game had to be canceled with Harlan. Dale. And in fact, Carn City tonight gets in their game against Stockdale and Carn City wins that one 28-27. Just getting word that the game in Bernie has gone final and Alamo Heights has pulled off the upset 23-20. In fact, you saw the game winning interception right there. And in fact, that's three upsets tonight. One of your teams scored 80. One of your teams scored 76 tonight. Yeah, it was a big wow. night. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Breaking new developments as the ballot count continues in the race for president. The Associated Press is reporting that President Donald Trump's chief of staff has been diagnosed with coronavirus. Mark Meadows traveled with President Trump in the run up to Election Day and last appeared in public Wednesday morning without a mask as President Trump falsely declared victory in the race for the White House. The news comes more than a month after President Trump was diagnosed with COVID-19. Meanwhile, former Vice President Joe Biden addressed the nation from Wilmington, Delaware. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is there with the latest. At the end of a week of uncertainty, with a winner still not declared in this historic presidential election, Joe Biden trying to bring calm to an anxious nation. We're going to win this race with a clear majority with the nation behind us. Never forget, the tallies aren't just numbers. They represent votes and voters. The former vice president's lead growing in some battleground states as ballot counting continues, including in Pennsylvania, where Biden is currently ahead. If he wins those 20 electoral votes, he will be the next president. If President Donald Trump wins Pennsylvania, he would still have to win several other states to secure a second term. The president tweeting ahead of Biden's speech, Joe Biden should not wrongfully claim the office of the president. I could make that claim also. Legal proceedings are just now beginning. The president's team has already filed multiple lawsuits as he baselessly questions the integrity of this election, making unsubstantiated claims of fraud. They're trying to rig an election and we can't let that happen. Election officials across the country adamantly dispute the president's assertions. We have not seen anything so widespread that it could potentially affect the outcomes. While some, including the president, continue to spew baseless claims of fraud, claims for which his team has not produced one iota of evidence, what we have seen here in Philadelphia is democracy, pure and simple. And Joe Biden says his team plans to fight any legal challenges and make sure every lawful ballot is counted. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Wilmington, Delaware. Well, let's check in on the latest numbers in the race for president. Former, former Vice President Joe Biden has 253 electoral votes and President Donald Trump has 214 electoral votes. There are a number of states still working through the process of counting and tabulating ballots, making it too close to call in several states. One of those states is Arizona. The Associated Press has called this for Joe Biden, but because Arizona is still counting those ballots, we have decided to remove its 11 electoral votes from our count here at KSAT. You can see Arizona highlighted in yellow since again it is too close to call.
Let's take a look at the latest coming out of Pennsylvania. Meantime, Joe Biden pulled ahead in this race just today, and his margin has been widening throughout the day. Most mail-in ballots have been counted, but election officials are now focusing their attention on provisional ballots, which could tip the race in either direction. And here's what we're seeing in North Carolina tonight. Most of the votes have been tallied. But the holdup here are those absentee ballots. Some 116,000 absentee ballots were requested, but it's unknown how many were actually returned. Voters there must postmark by November 2nd, and ballots must be received by November 12th. So election officials say don't expect to see these numbers change until we get closer to November 12th. Here's a quick look at the state of Arizona right now. Uh, Joe Biden with a 38,455 vote lead. We expect the next update from Arizona to come sometime tomorrow morning and in Georgia tonight. The county is expected to go into the weekend and this is a razor thin margin in Georgia right now. Uh, former Vice President Joe Biden with a little over 4,000 votes. That's his lead over. President Donald Trump. Nevada also a state to watch tonight and you can see the difference there. It continues to grow throughout the day. 22,657 the latest numbers that we have. State officials there responding to criticism that the ballot count is taking too long. Priority here is to make sure that we're accurate in what we're doing. So we're not interested in moving as fast as we can. We want to be accurate. We're very fortunate at this point that we've had staff working for many days and they're very efficient in what they're doing. So we're confident that the work is being done accurately. Taking a look at each candidate's pathway to victory, Joe Biden must claim two of the four battleground states on your screen or the state of Pennsylvania in order to win the election. President Trump needs three of those battleground states and Pennsylvania to claim a victory. Live cam tonight is uh about ready to start our weekends yeah, here just there. a few minutes away <laughs> 66 degrees out there and expect fog that's right it's friday isn't it it is mm -hmm. yeah slipped my mind I guess. yeah yesterday was your big thermometer day of course and then this <laughs> fridays i was just a thermometer <laughs> hangover is what it is is that what it is yes okay. it's a thermometer All thursday right. hangover yeah next week's going to be a big one it is that's a big unveiling of the uh, thermometer ornament i'm doing it earlier than usual this year because it's 2020 and 2020 has been let you fill in the blank yourself. All right, let's talk about the drought monitor. We could actually use some rain around here, of course, and I wish we saw some improvement in this. But yesterday we looked at South Texas. Today I want to look at the whole state and particularly West Texas. You really see a need for some rainfall, extreme and exceptional drought. West Texas even creeping up into the panhandle. Nearly half the state right now, 46% is in drought. Three months ago, it was 33%. So we've fallen deeper into drought and as for our weather pattern, it doesn't bode well for rain chances right now. There is a big upper level trough, a big dip in the upper level flow over the western US. That's good for them. They're getting some moisture that unfortunately isn't going to translate our way. We still like to see this happen because sometimes we get fortunate and these dig southward and kick up our showers. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case and we still have tropical depression Ada. Remember, was it three, four days ago? It was category four hurricane, and it made landfall in Nicaragua and affected Honduras as well. And this is starting to get its act back together a little bit, and will so over the weekend. Some 50 to 60 mile per hour winds with this over Cuba, Florida Straits, and then likely just lurking in the eastern Gulf of Mexico through the early and middle part of next week. So, unfortunately, we're not going to tap into any of that moisture either. That's all going to be. South Florida. They're going to take a lot of rain from that. I wish we could just share the rain, spread the love and just take these colors and pull them westward. But unfortunately, our rain chances are pretty slim here the next several days. I mean, you're looking at a few morning sprinkles and drizzle Sunday, Monday and even Tuesday mornings, but that's it. And with the cold front that hits on Tuesday, about a 10% chance. So today, no rainfall. 55 degrees is our low temperature, 78 the afternoon high. That morning fog was pretty thick for a while. Took a while to shake it, but we did and then we got some sunshine. Right now across the state, mostly 50s, 60s, still some locations hanging on to 70. Of course, Del Rio included at 71, but Kerrville, Fredericksburg, 54. These air temperatures are dropping down near the dew points. In turn, we'll have some morning fog to start the day tomorrow, but I don't expect it to last all that long, whereas Sunday morning, 
I think you'll notice the fog for longer into the morning and even midday hours and some drizzle as well. So a little bit of dampness on Sunday, but unfortunately no real rain, nothing to accumulate or add up just that little bit of dampness. Temperatures over the weekend we will see mornings in the 50s to near 60 afternoons right near 80. That goes all the way through Monday and Tuesday and a weak cold front is going to pay us a visit on Tuesday. Unfortunately, it's not a real fall like cold front we're not talking pumpkin spice front here. Sorry. Ooh. <laughs> Better than nothing. Thanks. Thank you, Adam. Coming up, our case at Q&A with San Antonio businessman Henry Munoz, the founder of Memento Latino. Next.